Hey guys, it's your boy Raheem. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, smash the subscribe button because I talk about property investment, personal development, and how to gain financial freedom. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how I buy houses with no money. So if you want to start and scale your property investment journey and you worry about money, this video is for you. But before we get to that, I'd like to ask you to please do me a favor. We've done a research, we realized 45% of the people that are watching my channel have not subscribed to my channel. So if you're one of those, I'll kindly ask you to please hit that subscribe button now to join the family. Go for it. Don't, don't wait. Don't leave it to chance. Do it right now. So thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate all the people that have joined the family. Um, thank you so much for doing that as well. The channel is growing immensely and we have, we've lined up lots of guests that I'm going to start interviewing. So it's going to be absolutely amazing. So let's get to it. How do I buy houses without putting any of my own money down? You see, when I start, before I started my property investment journey, I thought money was the only thing that would get me to start my investment journey. I was told I need 200,000, 100,000, 50,000, you name the figures. I've had all these advices from people that have never bought properties in their entire life. So I tend to believe that. I believed on it for a few years, literally never looked at into properties because I thought I needed seriously um, uh, money to start my investing. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five ways you can start your property investment with no money down. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you four ways you could buy properties without putting any of your own money down. I wish I knew this before I started my investment journey, but perhaps you're watching me now. This could be an eye opening for you to start and scale your property investment journey. So the first thing you want to do before you even start looking at these five ways of buying properties with no money is to, is to educate yourself. You see, when you educate yourself, you open doors, not just on your knowledge, learning skills and experiences you open doors to meeting new people people are doing what you set yourself to achieve so the first thing you want to do is to educate yourself i'm not talking about university here i'm not talking about college degrees here i'm talking about educating yourself learning from someone who's practically doing what they are um, uh, doing mentoring get them to mentor you shadowing them hanging around with people like that would would be what would get you to where you want to go in order for you to be able to buy houses with no money of course you need to educate yourself so let's get that out of the way let's talk about the four ways you can buy houses without putting any of your own money now the first one is consider seller finance now, now what is seller finance seller finance is a process by which the seller will lend you money to buy their houses. This might sound crazy to you, especially if you've never heard about it. It's a way that someone will lend you their money to buy their houses. So what do I mean by that? You will find someone who's desperately, not even desperately, someone who's looking to sell their house, but they haven't actually sold it to the time period they wanted to sell it. So what sort of people are they? This could be pub landlords, club landlords, um, and big commercial units like homeowners. People like that are people that believe in assets and they believe in the property as well. So, and they may not be able, they may have not got the amount of money they wanted for that property. So you can then approach them and say, look, I'm interested in buying your property. Obviously negotiate so you can buy the property in the future at a price. You may be thinking, I haven't got the money. Yes, you have not got the money, but this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be talking to them, negotiate with them, find out what their pain point is. Find out why the property hasn't sold. What is the reason why it's been on the market for a very long time. Find out the pain point of the person selling it. Once you know the pain point, find out how you can add value to what they're doing. Find out how you can resolve the problem that they're encountering, for example. Once you find out all that, say, look, this is how I would like to buy your property. I would like to buy your property. I would like you to fund me to buy the property. It may sound crazy to people who have never heard of it, but this is what lots of companies do. This is what lots of people use to buy houses. I am one of those people as well. So what would happen? Let's just give an example. Suppose the property worth 100,000 pounds, okay? You can approach the seller and say, look, I wanna buy your property. I know you have 100,000 pounds and the bank and will want me to put 25% down in order to be for me to be able to buy the property from you. You can then go to the owner and say, look, are you able to borrow me 25% of the actual value of the property in order for me to buy the whole the house from you? Right, now, if the seller believe in the asset and they believe that it is, it, it is a valuable asset, you can have an agreement where they will lend you the money. 
okay they will lend you the money on an interest whatever interest rate you you've agreed between you between you two okay it could be one year loan it could be two years it could be three years however much or however long you want the agreement to go it's a negotiation process okay so you negotiate with them they would agree that so once they've agreed they will lend you the 25 percent that you're buying the house so once they've lent you the 25 percent they have to have the money basically they will give you the money in most instances some of these people got got savings account and they might not even need all the money in the property that they're selling they might only need 65 percent of it in some instances like, like one of the properties we bought recently the owner only wanted 50 percent of that money they only desperately needed 50 percent of that money so they were able to lend us 25 percent to buy that property let's say in this example it's hundred thousand pounds that was twenty five thousand pounds so you take that twenty five thousand pounds that then twenty five thousand pounds becomes your deposit you pay that to your solicitors and, and then you go and borrow the 75 percent from the from from a different lender send that money the solicitor get that money they pay and buy your property so your seller will still receive hundred thousand pounds because your twenty five thousand pounds you've put in the bank and the 75% that the bank would have lent, which is 75,000, that goes to 100,000 pounds. But in real term, they've only received 75,000 pounds because obviously they lend you the 25%. So obviously then you pay interest that way. By the time you think about it, you've got a property, you're renting that property out, you're making money, you're, you're paying your interest to your lender as well as your um, uh, um, seller finance and um, the um, owner who finances your money, you've got a property to yourself. You may be thinking how easy it is to do things like that. If you go out there looking for it, you will find it. And the way it really, really works, look for bigger properties. You're not looking for a one or two bedroom or three bedroom houses. You want to be looking at bigger properties like pubs, um, commercial units that have been closed for a very long time and things like that. You know, opportunities like that is where you'll be able to form a seller finance agreement. So if you start looking now, you'll see it around. You see, when you, when you, when you look at something, you start seeing it all over you, right? It's like when you wanted to buy a car, you, you know the mark you wanted to buy and the model you wanted to buy. As soon as you walk out of the street, you realize everybody is driving that car. Okay, that's how it works basically. If you go out there looking for deals like that, you will see it all over around you. It's all about you going in there, speaking to these people and trying to negotiate on that basis. Number two, utilize lease option agreement. Now, what is lease option agreement? Lease option agreement is the process by which you, the investor, would agree to buy a property at today's price for some time in the future. I know it sounds crazy, right? So let me give you an example, okay? Suppose um, uh, you've got this to sell, okay? You can agree to buy this at today's price for some time in the future, okay? Suppose I am the seller, I will agree to sell this mic to you five, six years down the line at today's price, okay? And you then, the investor, would also say, look, if you can offer me that price, we agree on price, I'm happy to buy this property from you, or in this case, this mic, in five years time. So what you then, the investor, do, you then take full control of that property as if you own it. You pay the mortgage, you pay the repair and maintenance, you look after the property as if you own it, okay? And you rent it out and make money from it. So, so, so now that, that an agreement get formed and that's what we call the lease option agreement, okay? So you then will be paying everything plus a bit of money so that, it's, so that it incentivize me for allowing you to buy that property a few years down the line. And then you, the investor, then go and then sub, um, do whatever you want to do with the property, okay? So, so now, if you agree to doing that, me, the seller, is obliged to sell the property to you when you call the option in five years' time. In five years' time, when you turn around and say, look, Raheem, I want to buy the property, I cannot object. I have to sell the property to you. In contrast, you, the investor, have an option, right? You have an option to buy the property, not an obligation. You can walk away from it, for example. And you can say, I don't want the property anymore. You can sell that property to someone else. So you've got the option, not the obligation, okay? For me, I have the obligation to sell the property to you. You may be thinking, why would someone actually allow that to happen? 
in this case, me who's selling the mic to you. Perhaps I'm in a financial difficulties, I might not be able to pay for the interest payment or the mortgage payment for that property because I have lots of, lots of, lots of expenses. And honestly, I will not be able to sell the property in an open market to get the amount I want because probably my mortgage is more than the value of the property. So if my mortgage is more than the actual value of the property, I'm in a negative equity. So I might not be able to sell the property at that time and make profit from it. But if you can agree a price with me for now, for some time in the future, I may consider that. Because one, I'm in negative equity, and secondly, um, uh, I won't be able to sell the property at the price I wanted it, okay? And perhaps I, I own the property outright, and uh, I just don't need the money, basically. I don't need the money, and I just wanna take that tax burden away from me so that I can concentrate in doing something else. Investors like you can come and get that property from me. So these are some of the reasons why someone would allow you to buy that property at today's price for some time in the future. You may be thinking, how, how often did this happen? It happens as often as you possibly go out and look for it. If you go looking for deals like that, you will be able to acquire properties like that. Because if you're very clever, then when you acquire properties like that, you put them on the market, you rent them, make money, save the money you're making from there for when you call the option in a few years' time. You call the option, then by that time, you've got enough money to buy that property. So you never want to work away from such deal because if you do, you're losing out. Because what happens, property prices tend to go up in value, eight to 15% a year. And obviously you're taking that property to allow the capital appreciation to grow over time. And if you're very clever, you would have worked, find a way how you can force value to that property. Perhaps it was a three bedroom house and there's an opportunity to convert to four or five bedroom or even convert it to, to um, HML. So you will apply for the planning, hold on to the planning, wait until you call the option, you call the option, you buy the property and then you go and force that value remortgage pull all your money out so you can go again and buy more houses. That's another fantastic way to buy houses. I currently use that exact strategy, the lease option ag agreement, to um, uh, buy a 1.2 million pound property um, uh, in South Wales. So that's the second option. Third option is finding partners. Now, remember when I told you when you educate yourself is very good? When you go into a networking event, business event, property investment, training events, there's potential to get partners there. People have got money but do not have the time to invest in property. So what you could do, you can then go and educate yourself, learn a lot about property, then get these investors to invest with you and then you do all the work. You do all the hard work, looking at the deals, analyzing the deals, renovating the property, doing all the legwork basically whilst they bring in the money. That's another way to start your investment journey. That's how I started my investment journey to be honest. I used to be I used to live with my landlord and I told my landlord, look, if I go and get these properties, would you be able to fund the deals? And my landlord was okay with it. She said, look, if you can get a deal and they can rent that property, they will allow you to rent that property out. I will put all the money in. So obviously he hadn't had the money, he invested. I was doing all the legworks whilst he put in the money. I said, that's another way you could start buying houses without putting any of your own money down. Number four, one of the most important one, I love this one because it expose you to a lot of lot of opportunities is deal sourcing or deal packaging in essence you are going out there to look for property deals okay properties that you can sell to other investors you know so, so many investors out there they're very busy renovating doing so many stuff they haven't got time to negotiate on property deals so what you can do as an investor you can go and negotiate on these deals agree to buy the property as if you're buying it yourself and then you subsequently sell that information to investors who are looking to buy houses so what you do you do that multiple times maybe a few times or maybe six or seven months or maybe even a year you raise capital from there whatever profit you make you don't go on holiday you don't go buy expensive cars or living in staying in expensive hotels no you save that money to save towards buying your own property deals. And then believe me, when you're deal sourcing, you may come across seller finance, you may come across lease option agreement, and perhaps you may also find partner that is willing to work with you to expedite your property investment journey. That's the reason why I saved that loss. I saved the best for last. So if you go out sourcing deals, looking for property deals, there's a potential for you to be able to have all three of the things I discussed seller finance, lease option agreement, and partnership. I really hope this video has been helpful. This video has been helpful. Smash the like button below. 
subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos. I look forward to sharing the next video. Thank you.